can see it, please. Can't? No, I can see this much. There we go. Hello, everybody. Well, hello, hello. A little bit of technical issues uh, going on here between the Philippines and the United States and probably everywhere else on the globe. But uh, we're here now. You're here now. And now we want to know one thing. Do you, Roblin Live? I'm going to say it again. Do you, Roblin Live? I know you do. I see all of you jumping on board right now. Woohoo! Dougie's already 20 on youtube that's just a warm-up and let's see how many we got here stand by one just out of curiosity it is 36 that's 55 and we ain't hit a lick yet Woo! doggies doggies and more doggies so thank you everybody for being here starting out with 55 is uh not too shabby all right and remember one thing as Roblin Livers, you can get anything that you want at Ashman Farr's Restaurant. Cha-cha-cha. Right. All cool. right. Today is day 613. That's 613 consecutive Roblin Lives, which uh, from my count, that's uh, we're approaching 700, so it won't be long. Wow. <laughs> And uh, we'll be at uh, two years in August, so not too shabby. It's just incredible when you think about it. I can imagine we've done six over 600 shows. The time does fly. Yes, it does. It's day 613. Today's the 28th day of April, 2024. And this is, without a doubt, in my estimation, one of the, if not the best, nighttime chats on the planet. And always on O-Connect, I might add. So those of you who aren't using O-Connect, shame, shame, shame. You're not doing it the asthma far away. So hop on board. Get yourself going on O-Connect. If you need training, hey, O-E-S Classroom. That's OES, Asia Pacific Classroom, every Tuesday at, let's see, 9 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So don't be, you know, don't be uh, one of those who doesn't know anything about O-Connect, and there's a lot of that out there. Come on down, learn a little bit, and earn a little bit. What's wrong with that? Ain't a thing wrong with that in the whole wide world there, Jethro. All right, so let's get this uh, uh, shindig off and running. It's Sunday. It is Sunday, as we all know, and hopefully everybody had a good Sunday, and it's Monday in the Philippines. It's also Monday uh, many other places, Israel, as well as uh, oh, overseas in uh, uh, the UK and parts of Europe. It's tomorrow already, so wow. there you have it. Let's talk Sunday. Let's talk Roblin Live and Ollie. No wonder, Doc. He's taking a short napster right now. And uh, as we do every night, we have a topic. And our topic tonight in our series. And we're doing a series on appreciating cultural diversity. Well, tonight, Appreciating cultural diversity through superstitions. Ooh, yeah. Check that background out. It's got a black cat walking across it and says Friday the 13th on the other side. But not every culture will know what those things mean, but we'll explain it, right? If I must. It's, it's, yes. Know, every culture has different superstitions. And we'll talk a little bit about that. There are different superstitions for different cultures. Yeah. All right, that will be followed by, our discussion will be followed by community time, a bit of signing, and a song by the Tin Man. You know him as John Barilla, but he's also JJB Tin Man. Yes, he Ooh, is. Oh, yeah, he's in the house. All right, now, Very nice. let's, uh, before we say a few hellos, let's pray for Ash and his lovely wife, Ash Mahan, and their two boys, Omar and the Chunky Boy, Chunkster who's not so chunky anymore, but he still likes those chocolate chip cookies out here. <laughs> so say prayers for them and include in your prayers the 
uh, support staff, the mar uh, not marketing, the media staff, of course, but it's uh, it's primarily the tech media and support staffs around the globe for their continued good health and safety. And if you would, please send out your love, light, and prayers to anyone you know or anyone you know of who may be suffering from an illness, an accident, just plain things not going their way, send them a prayer, send them some love, send them some light. We, uh, please. Definitely. All right. We have some announcements tonight. Should I hold off on announcements and we'll say a few howdies? Yeah. All I right. can say howdy to the people in the YouTube. Go ahead. Would you? I see our moderators. First of all, I want to acknowledge them. I see hard at work right now. Michael Chetta. I also see Kushal Pegu. Let me see if anybody else. Just those two moderators are in there at the moment. Thank you very much. And I want to say hello to lots of our regulars are here. I want to say hi, first of all, to Tan Dan. He's always with us. Tan Dan Majumdar. And we've got Nagaraj Wasabi always with us as well. Hello to, oops, I kicked the wrong button. Let me go back. Okay, I'm back. Um, what was I saying? Chandan and hello to Narsaya Arigela. Welcome. Ooh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, and hello to Baku Mondal. Baku Mondal. Angie Lynn in Kansas City is there. She says from Kansas, USA. I she didn't say Kansas City. She's in Kansas. She's saying, hey, y'all. Welcome. And we got Maninja Jaiswal back with us again. Hi there. Thank you, thank you. Jo Jose Lucio, always with us. Thank you so much. We got DS Nayak, a regular with us as well. Kim Mills from Nova Scotia is in the house. Hello to Frank Rowe. And hi to, Ch oh yeah, I said Chandan Majumdar. Um, hello to Mohammed Angur Hossein. Thank you for joining us. Hello to also to Kun John Orsan. Kun John Orsan. Thanks for joining us as well. Hello to Bamal Patel. And Jillian Ha has hopped in. Hello. VJ, VJ's here. I hope you're doing well, VJ. Um, I'm almost at the bottom here. Levi Mamabolo just joined us. Hi, Levi. And we got Diamond Mommy 18 saying, What's up? What's up with you? And Ra Ram Rama Vatar Chowdhury is here with us. Hello, Rama Vatar. Hi to Ranjan Gouda. Thank you for joining us. Claudette St. Charles is with us. Hi, Claudette. Uh, we also want to say hi to Mohananda Roy from Bangladesh. Welcome. Hello to Jerup Wahia. How are you? And hi to Amar Tehran Tehran. Welcome to our show. And let me see if I hit it. I'm almost at the bottom. Ram Kumar is with us. Hello, Ram. And Sarananda Das just popped in. He's on in the webinar chat too. She said he's on both sides. Didn't we and, just see him earlier today? Oh yes, we did in Unpassive uh, Future Internet Family. It was a very good webinar. Thank you, Chanda. I mean, thank you, Sarananda and uh, Bilal Ch Chakraborty, who is the host. Thank you, thank you. I want to say hi to John Barilla, our moderator. He is now with us. Hello to Buneshwar. How are you? Welcome to our show. And Colonel Daniel Lee is with us. Hi, how are you? All right, that's it. I caught up. All right, we got about uh, 42 on O-Connect. Let's say a few howdies, Isabel. Uh, hello to you. And Franz uh, Marcelin, of course, Greg Miller. Michael Chatta is doing double duty there. I ran a stack salad. Catherine is here. And let's see, uh, Sidarami is here. And AJ is here, 
and let's see who else. Rajesh, he is here. Pit Yardar is here. Hello to you. And Juliana is here. Uh, she looks like she's here twice. And let's see, Venka, uh, Venka Tola is here. And it looks like Dawn Swihart is here. David Switzer, uh, DL, uh, is here as well. And that's DL McConaughey, Pat Green, Frank Rowe, Carmela Schwartz, Rita T Loteca, Lynette Mighton, uh, Assis Das, of course. Arsad is here. Jennifer Drummond in the house. Melanie Marcano, of course. At, oh, Sahadov is here. Sean Carr is here. Lois White is in the house. Nagaraj, as Lynn mentioned, is here and he's doing double duty. Greg Lakin in the house. Hello, Greg. Pedro, Jose, Estrada, Salatis is in the house. Surrender Singh is here. Armin Hogue in the house. Sukumara uh, Biswa is here. Uh, Ayola is here. John Barilla is here doing double duty. Patience is here. Sadananda Das, as I mentioned, and Angela Laland. So there's 43 there and 27 there. Ooh, doggies. That's uh, 43 and 27 is 70 any way you look at it. So with 70 of us, I think we've got a quorum and, we'll uh, and a more. minion. We'll get more because it's early for India and Bangladesh. Everybody They'll be right along. They'll be coming in. All right. So there's our hellos for the evening so far. Uh, just two or three days left of this O Connect 10-day extension, I might add. Migration without hesitation, of course. And once you've migrated, you know the drill. Sign the NDA and affiliate agreements. Check out the On Passive newest website, Sivu Play. Check out the On Passive YouTube channel, Sivu Play. Check out Mohammed Nazal and his X comments and blog. And uh, you got a call? Oh, your camera's off. It was on a minute ago. Okay, yeah. let's try it again. And here's there the camera go. once again. All right, I'm back. I would never left, but I'm back anyway. Attend webinars and chats as time permits. Uh, know of anyone needing on passive help, you know the drill. Remember, helping one helps us all. So subscribe to O-Connect as we continue a few more announcements. If you haven't subscribed yet to O-Connect, hop on one and uh, O-Connect of your choice and enjoy si vous play and that's uh the latest from uh the guy who thinks he's the greatest which uh nah not me uh tonight's topic will be a fun one with many uh years having gone by with the first what we call superstitions Ooh. from many years gone by superstitions have been around for time in memoriam Ali's question of the evening is this. What? Oh, excuse me one minute. Ali's question of the evening is, have you, have you, any superstitions? And if so, what are they and why? Perfect example in the United States is uh, baseball players put their uh, uh, cleats hanging up in their lockers a certain way. Are oh. you one of those baseball players who does that? I never heard of that. Or are you one of those football players who runs on the field and then checks to see that you uh, don't have your athletic supporter? No, no, no. I didn't mean to say, that. well, yeah, why not? Doesn't have your athletic supporter on? Well, if you put it on the way you do every game, it's not going to be a problem. So that's a superstition. Athletes have a couple of superstitions and others in terms of um, uh, the black cat who you see dancing across your screen. Uh, if, a, if a dark cat or a dark black cat crosses your screen or crosses in front of you, look out. That bad could luck. mean bad luck. And we don't need any man, more yeah, bad like, luck than like, we've had. Like Chris is showing, see that black cat. cat. If, let's say that cat is crossing your path. Oh, boy. Look out. It could be time for a little bit of uh, bad luck. All right. So that's superstitions. We we'll want to know what ones you have uh, and what ones you, what you know, what they are and why. 
it should be interesting because I'm sure every country has their own superstitions. Oh, yeah, it's, it's totally gonna be, different. It'll everyone. be fun and interesting. I can't wait. All right. Superstitions are deeply rooted in many, many cultural traditions, okay, over the years, over the many, many years, and are a means of appreciating cultural diversity. Not everybody has the black cat situation. Not everybody has the don't go under a ladder. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have bad luck. Or if you break a mirror, you're going to have bad luck. Well, right here, right now at On Passive, Roblin Live, we've got no superstitions in play at the moment. But I think it would be interesting to ask people, what are the cultural superstitions? And do you believe in those superstitions? That's the part that would be interesting. You don't have to believe in them, but you need to know about them. Yeah. So that's what we're here for tonight. Traditions and are a means of appreciating cultural diversity, of course. The heart of superstitions is a desire, get this now, a desire to understand the future and find comfort in fears and get a happy place or achieve happiness. Pretty cool stuff. And superstitions are a way of carrying on age old traditions. Mm -hmm. Like I said about the baseball players, same thing. Uh, like I should say about the student who comes to class and he wears a special hat. Well, he wears that hat for good luck. Well, that's a superstition. So we'll talk about that stuff in a few moments. All right. Yeah. Cultural origins and diversity. Let's talk a little about that. In North America, superstitions stem from religious beliefs, luck, and prosperity. And here are a couple of examples in South America, uh, sweeping a broom. Now get this, sweeping a broom over one's feet is linked to preventing marriage. Oh, wow. You don't want to get married? Just sweep that broom right over your feet and looks like superstition wise, you won't be getting married. That's funny. <laughs> and then there's another one uh, is eating 12 grapes, not 13 or 15, eat 12 grapes. At midnight on New Year's Eve, and it brings good luck in Latin America for the next year. Wow, well, you better count carefully. Yeah, don't do 13. That could be ugly. <laughs> All right. Then there are the different Asian cultures, and Lynn knows a little something about Asian cultures, as does Francis Tay, as does Chris Tiazon. Zone, zone, zone. Such as in Hinduism and Chinese traditions. Get this. In Hindu, not cutting your hair and nails after sunset will keep us from being disrespectful with God. Had no idea about that. And in Chinese, eating noodles, get this, eating noodles on one's birthday represents longevity and a longer life. Mm. Nowhere but Roblin Live do you get these nuggets. It's because noodles are long, do you think? What's Could the reasoning be. behind it? That's going to be interesting too. When you share the superstition, you, if you know the background of the logic of that superstition, that would be interesting to tell us too. And you can put those in the chat, whether it be the YouTube chat, whether it be the On Pass Vote Connect chat. Or you can hop on as a panelist when we have community time. What do you think of that? Sounds good. All right. So the noodles represent longevity and longer life. And then, get this now, in the Middle Eastern countries and African cultures, they have superstitions too. These, I might add, are rooted in religious origins, such as the following. The belief in the evil eye. Ooh, somebody gives you the oh, stink heard, eye, that, which yeah. is thought to bring bad luck, but can be warded off with religious practices. So there's an anecdote. And so that to speak. term, stink eye, is from Hawaii, right? Because I think it is from Hawaii. It's from specifically point. from if you give someone the stink eye, that means you're giving them a glare or dirty look, right? Well, yes, that's true. Now, in the USA and other parts of the globe, uh, there are several that we know about. One I mentioned already, which is if you walk under an open ladder, you get bad luck for a year. 
If you break a mirror, let's say you're putting on your makeup, ladies, and for some reason the mirror slips and breaks, guess what? Seven years of bad luck. Ooh, Long time. That could get ugly, ugly, and uglier. And then there is the black cat superstition. Yes, we most of us around the globe know this. If a black cat crosses one's path, you're looking at a year of bad luck. Year of bad luck. What about if you have a black cat as a pet and it's indoors? It's going to cross your path every day. I would say that doesn't apply. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there I hope, are. Uh, I hope that doesn't stop people from adopting or keeping black cats. Poor black cats. All right. All right. All right. That's all my right. commentary there. All right. Thank you for that, Miss Nakamoto. All right. Well, that puts a wrap on our uh, little bit of information about superstitions, cultural diversity. Now. Uh, in just a few minutes, we'd like to have uh, uh, as many of you as want to uh, come to community time. Well, what's community time? That's where you, I say again, you, the attendee, get a chance to tell it like it is. You, you get to be a panel. panel. You get to express what you think. Uh, if you want to show your camera, you don't have to show your camera. But the main thing is you're interacting with everybody, and it's fun. That's what we do at RoblinLive.com. We interact, and that's a good thing. That's what makes us one great big movement, one great big family. That's right. All right, let me get rid of, the, of this, if I may. I have to move this to the side, which I'll do now. And I'll open this up to where I can move it there, and then I can get rid of it too. And then we'll open up our screen to the, uh, as they say in the movies, to the big screen. And here we go. There we are. All right. Now, without further ado, let me explain how those of you who want to come to the panel can come to the panel, shall I? Please do. All righty. I please do. Well, then I must. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's how it's done. Uh, Lynn will enable the make me a speaker request. It's called speaker request, feature. right? I was going to call it something else. Yeah, it's it's a awesome. speaker request feature. She'll click on that button to enable that. It'll come on, and then on your screen, you'll see at the bottom a list of characters who are here. And off to the left, you'll see the little guy, little guy standing there with a Looks like a mic, uh, hit, uh, no, it really, really looks like a speaker hanging out. And that speaker will be off to the right ear. And what do you do? Very easy. When, when, uh, uh, once Lynn has enabled this, all you have to do is click on it and it brings you right to the panel. You don't pass go, you don't collect $200, none of that stuff brings you right to the panel. And I have a feeling people are, are going to want to share the cultural superstitions they know of. I think it's going to be super cool tonight. Can't wait. Can't wait to hear people's opinions and their sharing. Because maybe even two people from the same culture, maybe they heard the superstition in a slightly different version of it. So that would yeah. be so super Just cool. Just like with sign language. You have American sign. You have international signs. No, it's country signs for every country. Every country, right. That's what I meant by international. Mm -hmm. That's right. Wow, we've got a very active webinar chat. Thank you, you guys. Lots of hellos, lots of love in the chat, and that's what we like to see. We appreciate you guys. All right. Uh, let's see. It's uh, 8.33. Are you ready to start doing the panel yes. thing? Are you guys ready to come into the panel? Come on now. The, our highest number has been 38 on the panel, which was two pages worth. Wow. Let's see what we can do tonight. So bring it, bring it, bring it. Let's go. Come on to the panel. Come on this down. Time for, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. First to come in is Melanie. Mel Mel Marcano. Welcome, uh, Mel Mel. And Melanie happens to have a beautiful black cat. And I know Melanie does not have any bad luck. That's just saying, Mel. Your black cat is good luck for you. Exactly. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> Welcome, Mel. All right, Mel. next, we got Greg Hill coming in. And his um, 
hashtag is my Ferrari. So it sounds like it sounds like Ferrari, but it's spelled M Y four R E, which is a very cool <coughs> hashtag, cool branding. Welcome, Greg. And as more come on the panel, Lynn will post uh, via screen share. Uh, what the uh, background is Hello. for those of you who want to join us on the panel. Mr. Giff, Mr. Ferrari. Welcome, Greg. Welcome, welcome. And let's welcome John, JJB, Tin Man. Uh, tin Man's in the house. He's got, let's see, what does the Tin Man have? Heart? He had a heart, right? Yeah. Tin John's Tree. got a heart. He has, yeah, I think so. The okay. lion, no, wasn't the lion a heart? Yeah, that's the tin right. man was a brain, I think. Yeah. Is it a brain, John? He'll tell us. He knows that story well. When he unmutes. Okay, in the meantime, let us welcome Pat Green from Kansas. Welcome, Pat Green. And here comes Greg Lincoln. Hi, Greg. Hi, Welcome, Pat. Greg. Hi, Pat. Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. We're glad you're hopping on board. Thank you. And hello to Patience. Patience is in the house. Patience. All right. Uh, Oseware coming Oseware in. Oseware in the and, house. And here comes Don Swihart and her husband, D.L. McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. Good stuff. Come on down. And I see Carmela. The Israeli Rose Schwartz coming in right now. Hi, Don. Hi, Patience. Got to make your camera a little adjusted so we see your face. Yeah, that's much better. Good to have you here. And look at Greg going with his finger spelling. Uh, Gustavo is here. Hi, Gustavo. From Welcome. Columbia. Yeah. And we have Rita Loteca coming in. Rita Loteca. Here she comes. Hi, Pamela. All right, all right, all right. There's enough people here now where you could share that background. And we want to say hello to Armin Hoag. Armin Hoag is in the house. All right. All right. I'm going to do the file share. And as you know, I'm going to just place the image right here on your screen, the link to the image. All you got to do is... Click on it and you'll have the image right in front of you. All right, so you folks should have it right there on your screen. Click on it and you can, if you'd like to put your image in the background, your virtual background and hi to David Switzer. DS in the house from Kansas City, Kansas, or Kansas City, Missouri, home of the Kansas City Chiefs. And hi, Greg. Welcome, welcome, welcome. There's Dawn and DL. Greg welcome Lincoln to you kids, too. DL. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, welcome. Glad you're here. And let's see. It looks like you still got a mo one, or mo one or two more, right? Or no, is that uh, everybody? That's it for the moment, but the people will come in slowly. They'll pop in. All righty, then. Here we go. Uh, tonight we're talking uh, 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 one in a series. We're doing, I, I don't know, we may hit 10 or 12 series on this because it's all been fun. Uh, appreciating cultural diversity. And tonight's topic with uh, appreciating cultural diversity is our, is our, was, is superstitions, superstitions. So chances are some of you out there, if not all of you, have a superstition, whether it's wearing your same pair of uh, blue jeans, uh, you know, when you're out in the, on the farm, or whether it's uh, wearing the same tie to church every Sunday, or uh, whether it's uh, wearing your ball cap uh, straight for some days and backwards for others. So there you have it. It's going to be super cool to know various superstitions around the globe all righty okay well okay as uh, people come in uh, to the panel let us say welcome to you all thank you and uh, without further ado I think we're gonna see if there's any hands raised and right off the bat I mean right out of the chute here comes the tin man so 
Stand by, Tin Man, one moment. And uh, go ahead, Tin Man, and then we'll do Greg Hill. Tin Man, then Greg Hill. Go ahead, Tin Man. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, just a slight superstition uh, that I happened to think of when I was hanging out in the chat there when you were talking about things like walking under ladders and things like that. I, I remember when from when I was a kid and I don't remember who started it or whether it was kids in the neighborhood. But as we would walk along the street or walk down the sidewalk, you always had to be careful. And we would say, never step on a crack or you'll break your mother's back. Oh. Whatever that was about. Oh, I hadn't heard that one. <laughs> but but now here's the good thing i have a couple i hope you give me a minute or so because <laughs> superstitions in the theater and I, I i i have i don't know necessarily that i follow every one but let me just let me just read you a couple because it, it's kind of interesting and uh, anyway let me do that quickly uh okay uh oh, for example old school actors require their flowers after the curtain call not before the curtain call, claiming that a gift prior to the start causes a lackluster show. And then uh, here's some. Here's a couple now. I want to read these now. Uh, nearly every theater has a single light that is left on at all times, generally referred to as a ghost light. While the main reason for this light is safety so that no one ever is caught in a pitch black theater superstition holds that this light is also there to ward off evil spirits or mischievous ghosts here's another one here's a biggie this is a biggie too william shakespeare's play macbeth is said to be cursed so actors including myself avoid saying its name when in the theater now, the euphemism, the Scottish play, uh, actors also avoid even quoting any lines. Well, in other words, we use the euphemism if we, re euphemism, if we ever refer to Macbeth. We can't say Macbeth in the theater. We have to say the Scottish play. That's what I meant. Actors also avoid even quoting the lines from Macbeth before particularly uh, or the witches, or particularly the witches scene. And here's something that happens. If you do that or if you whistle backstage or in the dressing rooms either say the word macbeth or whistle backstage in the theater you have to go outside of the dressing room door turn around in a circle and say merde which i don't know if you know what that means but that's a french word for something that i won't say because we, we don't want to curse here so you have to do that and i think there might be one more here that let me just look real quickly uh well you don't want to have three candles lit on a stage because that brings bad luck superstition is that the person who stands closest to the shortest candle will be the next person to either get married or die and now here here's a big one that i'll just end up, yeah, i'll just end it up with this one if i can uh find it real quickly um da -da 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 -da. Well, anyway, uh, oh, well, anyway, it's about the tradition of uh, of why we say break a leg because it's 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 bad luck to wish someone good luck before their performance. You always say break a leg for good luck. You don't say the word good luck. And here's the thing that comes from the legs of the curtains uh, on the sides of the stage. Uh, that every theater has during you know when you have the curtains up there's always these side curtains these side legs and in the old days the the non the not the stars the people who had no lines or the extra people in the show they never got beyond that those legs they always had to stand behind those legs so that you would say break a leg to wish them that someday they'll get beyond that leg and have good luck and be big time performers so there's my superstitions in the theater i just throw those at you thank all you all right thank you jjb tin man will you be singing tonight yes i will be <laughs> all right very good let's go to don and dl please next oh excuse me let's go to greg uh we better go to greg hill i think he was next and then don and dl go ahead greg sorry it's the ladies before gentlemen and that's the way it's going to be uh go, don, don, go ahead <laughs> Don and I remember as a child, my grandma was very strict about anybody opening the umbrella inside the house. Because ah, it was bad luck. Bad luck for the house. And uh, 
And then another thing too, we used to fight over the wishbone for from the turkey at Thanksgiving. You know, who's going to break it and who's going to get the short end and who's going to get the long end. And if you get the short end, you're going to get bad luck. And that was always a silly thing as a kid, but we always fought over it. What did you want to? Yeah. Um, in north of Scotland, uh, Scotland uh, they, there's a tradition or superstition, I should say, actually, that uh, the fishermen on the way to their boats, if they if a minister passed them, they would consider that bad luck. <laughs> so, <laughs> no kidding. I, I thought that was hilarious, but they, yeah, that's true. They, that's a north, uh, how you pronounce it, the Hebrew, Hebrides, uh, uh, north of Scotland. But yeah, yeah they were. Uh, if a uh, minister uh, passed them on the way to the boats, they considered that bad omen. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. We'll be talking more in detail about these because we want to know if each and every one of you have any specific ones. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. And if you know the derivation of that superstition, how did it come to be? That's interesting, too. All right. Let's go to Double Mel. Hello, Mel. Hi, Rob. Hi, um, Mel. Sorry about that. The mic keeps closing itself on me. Hi, Rob. Hi, Lynn. Good night. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Um, <laughs> one of the superstitions, um, I don't know if you all know that, but um, they say when you burn rice a lot, when you're cooking rice and it burns a lot, that means you're calling for um, a wedding, a marriage for yourself. I don't know how true that is, but that's what they keep saying. You burn, uh, you burn the rice again, you're calling for a wedding. <laughs> um, the other one is um, my mom and them used to tell us, don't sweep after midnight. Like never sweep, use a broom after midnight. I'm not sure if it's related to witches or, but we used to be afraid to be sweeping, but here yeah, I sweep, I clean my place. After two in the morning, if I have to sweep, I sleep, you know. <laughs> um, the other one, I, I know there's lots of them, but there's one when a baby is born back home, um, my mom and them would put a, it's a blue, um, a little blue string around their, their feast, their little tiny feast, and that's to prevent any harm to them, you know, harm from people. They would not let the people touch them until they are strong enough. And I know some cultures around, maybe Carmela would attest because I know in my my Iranian friend think the same way. They have a little blue string that they would tie around with bits. There's some bits around them. And there's so many more, but these are the three that I can talk of right now. Ah, we're going to be talking more of them because there are literally thousands of superstitions. So, and Rita kept raising her hand, so she's in agreement with Mel. Maybe we could hear from Rita. Rita, okay, Rita. let's go. Uh, we'll have Rita talk now. She all right, we'll say. go Rita since she's uh, bouncing around, she's ready to speak, and then we'll go to Gustavo. Go ahead, Rita Loteca. Hello. Happy Sunday and good evening, good morning, wherever you are. So one of our superstition is um, owl. The bird you call it owl, right? O W L. Owl. Oh, the owl, yeah. Yeah, for us is a very bad luck, especially if it comes to your house, if it just flying, and landed in your house. That means somebody will die. So that is the concept that we have every culture. So whenever they see it, they will kill it. They have to kill it. And uh, if it comes like during daytime, you say that, okay, it's kind of like um, bringing a good news. But if it comes at night and it start, Ooh, that means it's a bad luck. The other, um, the other tribe is not only our, but they have a bird. That, for example, if I have anything against somebody and really I hate that person, like kind of a rain, like they will send a bird. And if, and they have people that understand that kind of a talk. If they, if you have the elder person, then this person have to go out and talk. Like, you know, it start cursing and so, and then the, the bird will run. 
that is the things that up to today we still have it and if they know that you are from that tribe don't ever have any problem with that person with that tribe because something if they are they are really into into it they will send you that bird and you don't want to have it that is kind of a witch that they have but yeah there is a lot we will talk about it later thank you uh, <laughs> sounds good rita uh thank you that thing about the owl i'd never oh, heard that poor and owls the owls should stay away so they don't have to get killed let's now move over to colombia and gustavo you got any tradi uh, excuse me any superstitions in your neighborhood sorry are you talking to me oh, no i was talking with uh, gustavo oh okay thank, thank you, you. Rita. thanks Rita. Uh, Gustavo, are you able to unmute? Go ahead, sir. While we wait, can we? Ah, okay, ahead? okay. Sorry. Uh, uh, one moment. Yes. Uh, one moment. Un momento, senor. Uh, we want to say thank you to Francis Tay for that super sticker. Thank you very much, Francis. Uh, we love you, brother. Thank you, Francis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's now go to Gustavo. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. Uh, big greetings, a big hug to all of you. A love, a love, a love to you. Uh, well, here in Colombia exist um, if I um, few few ones that I know. Never I have any uh, never this kind of thinkings uh, because I only just follow my my Lord. So, but uh, here in Colombia, for example, the thirty first of December, after this the first seconds. They have to dress underwears, yellow, yellow underwear, and have to go around four times their home. So if they do that, this year, that year will go to be a very big financial good news. Now, did you say the word underwear? So if I, yeah. I have to walk around in my underwear? Yellow. That has to be yellow. If you do yeah, yeah. underwear, yeah, wait a minute. I don't think you have to wear <laughs> underwear. Everybody sees it. You can wear pants or shorts or a dress, but under your yeah underwear. But did you have to dress it? Um, um, how do you say it? Uh, with if you are in jeans, you have to put it the underwear uh, above. Yeah, I don't know how to say in English. Over uh, your uh, jeans. That everybody that see that, that you have that. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> Yes. What did I just miss? Okay, so like if you're wearing jeans or pants, your underwear has to go over your pants. Exactly. Yes. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So you, <laughs> you have to, it's yellow underwear, you said? Did I hear that yes. right? Yellow. Yes, and, what, the, what, and the people what buy that. Wait, wait, what it's a big business. What culture Excuse is me? It? What culture is that, Gustavo? Well, that is here in Colombia, no? Uh, yeah, okay. right. Colombia, yes. So that is have to be yellow, and it's the big business here because everybody go and buy that uh, yellow underwear. So they have to walk around four times, and then if you do that, then you will go to have a very good news, financial good news that year. Well, it's that good. is. It's good for the underwear industry because everybody's going to be buying underwear. Do you have yellow like, underwear? No. Well, neither. Well, I don't think I do. We're in deep doo doo. It's not a common color to wear is underwear. I never did it, but I, it's so funny because the people really they think that is will go to be that, and they go before this is weeks before they buy, and then sometimes in the last days you don't find any yellow underwear. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I love it. All right. Well, thank you. Business. Any others uh, that you have right off your uh, top of your head, Gustavo? Other than yellow? Oh my God! I, the next year I will go to do it, uh, but I have I, I will go to be in Germany, so I don't think so because then I I will go to take out uh, some eggs in my head, so I will not go to do that. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Uh, Greg Hill, I saw your hand. Was that your hand I saw? Greg Hill, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Um, I kind of wanted to pull off a DL, uh, DL's uh, suspicion, which was about a fisherman stuff. And I did com some commercial fishing uh, in my younger years. I actually fished out in the 
Noyes Island out southeast of Alaska on a 65 foot per scene boat, the fishing boat. And I fished in here in the summer times. But anyway, yes, fishermen are very suspicious. They have a lot of superstitions. And uh, I'll give you one uh, that I thought was pretty funny. And that was the first time I ever went up to southeast Alaska fishing out of, off of, uh, it's out of Ketchikan about, oh, uh, eight hours out of Ketchikan on a place called Noise Island, which is out basically on the edge of the Bering Sea, which is pretty dramatic uh, fishing times. But um, we fished off a place called The Point, and when we made our first set, we brought our fish in. We were fishing for salmon. We brought our <clears throat> the fish on board. The first, first fish that, that hit the deck, the captain, was on the deck down there behind with us on the boat and he grabbed the fish that he saw that was first and he would give it a big kiss and then <laughs> keep the fish and then he'd actually take that fish and tie the fish to the, the stay that's the front stay on the boat which holds the mast and a lot of other things uh, they have uh, it, so anyway that was the tradition to kiss the fish and he saved the fish for later on <laughs> and now later on was uh, tradition. First you got superstition, and then you have tradition with that fish. And that was the, the captain. <laughs> they weren't usually married. A lot of them weren't married. So they'd take that fish in to the village, and they would trade that fish for a romantic night, let's say. <laughs> uh, with, uh, yeah, well, well, yeah, this is a G-rated show, so let's keep it a romantic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's that's what I can say for now. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Greg. Oh, my goodness. Back to Mel Marcano. Mel, Mel. There are so many nice superstitions. <laughs> when we were younger, um, we used to play, everybody probably know marble hole, where you would pitch that marble in the hole as a, a little game, like for cheap, for young people like when we were in um, middle school. <laughs> so after playing that, that marble hole, uh, um, they have, you know what jumping jacks are, right? The the little jacks, you use the marble and then you you pick up the jacks, I think, you know what that is, correct? Yeah. Okay, so the, we used to use either stones or the jacks or the marbles. So when it's about after six, our parents would call out to us and say, um, if you don't stop playing with these um, <laughs> those marbles, uh, especially the stones, then you know the, the, how they call those people, the jutsi people, you know, the zombies or whatever they call them, would come after you. So, what we used to do as young children, we'd stand in one spot, <laughs> we'd throw one of the stones behind us, and we'd say the devil behind us, and then the other stone we throw at the front saying that um, our oh, God is with us, you know? So we do it until the last stone is thrown because we are thinking that some, they're going to come after us, you know, after 6 p.m. at night. So that was one of the superstitions as um, little children, but that never happened. But it's just, you know, the older people telling you that that's what will happen. And then crossing the grave at night, at 12, after midnight. <laughs> Wait a minute, going past, yeah. is that on Halloween or just any time? No, anytime. So one day, uh, myself, my friend, and her niece, niece and nephew, still young, we are crossing the grave. I'm in my white tight jean skirt, and there goes. They started um, telling stories about, oh, the dead person is after you. And so I started, I was coward as a young person. So I started running, and they are already way ahead of me. So I'm asking them to wait. Guess what? The same grave that I was afraid of where they thought somebody would come up and come after you, that's the same grave I fell on. <laughs> I fell and hurt myself so bad, you know? And um, after that, I was okay. I, w I wasn't coward anymore. But, you know, it's superstition, what they put in your head and what they make you believe and thinking it's true, but it's not. I hurt myself on the same grave that I was afraid of that night. <laughs> And then yeah. you realize that you are fine and you're still alive. Yeah. <laughs> so that was good. Yeah. Hi, Gianna. Welcome, Gianna. Good evening. Good evening. Namaskar. Namaste, all. 
Love you all. Love you all. <laughs> we, we want to hear from you as well, Gianna, about superstitions. I'm sure there are superstitions you're going to want to tell us about. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, you know, uh, last four day I was suffering by cough. Uh, I got a, a cold. Uh, so that's why I attend here uh, half an hour late yes, today and yesterday also. So still oh. now I have a copy in my uh, chest uh, and throat is a pain. Oh, <coughs> and I, I talking still now I have a cough. Okay, all right. you. Thank you. Blessing to me, you all. Prayer to me, for me. Thank you. Yeah. Love you all. We hope you get better. Hope yeah, get yeah. Better. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Love you all. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Okay, now we go on to, I believe, Patience is, has her hand up. Yes, go for it. Patience. Hi everyone. So the superstition that I'll talk about is uh, in Africa, Ghana. We have the, if you are taking a shower and you are singing, they will tell you one of your parents will die. So when you get to the shower, you don't have to sing because <laughs> meaning that the, the, the ladder or the foam, the soap will get into your mouth, which is now good for you. If they tell you that, you ignore it. So they'll just tell you your parents will die. And the second thing is having an itchy left hand. That means you'll be getting money. Oh. But it, it, works, it works so well for my <laughs> grandmother. Anytime she says she's having an itchy left hand, trust me, she will get her money. People from nowhere will give her money. <laughs> okay, my left hand is never itchy. That's a bad sign. <laughs> you never get money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're bringing in Deborah Long. And we also want to welcome Franz Marcelin just came in. And Sita Ram Sarkar just came in. Pedro is having trouble since so he's coming back in again. I hope he can stay in. Poor, poor, poor Pedro. And... I think that's it. I have. You have any more um, superstitions, or is that it? Okay. Right. Next we have uh, Rita Loteka. Yeah, I'm coming with another one. Just maybe opposite of what patients said. Ours is like when when you have issues like. Left is uh, dad and right is mom. For example, if your left shoes turn like uh, upside down, that means your dad will die. Or you're one of the parents, like if it is left or like what kind of a shoes that, you know, if it is left or right. So when you see it, you have to run very fast and just flip it because you don't want one of them to die, right? And yeah. Yeah, so this is like, you know, yours is about taking shower and singing, but ours is about shoes. And uh, there is another one that I was going to talk. Okay, so there is another one also like when you are still like uh, teenagers, not teenagers, in the age of married, also related to a bird. We have a certain bird. When the bird is just like, if you see the bird and you will ask what country or maybe like between North, South and East, what direction that my husband is gonna come from. So like if it is by mistake or they really mean it, when the bird turn the other side, then you say, oh, my husband is gonna come from West. So somebody from Western is the one gonna come and marry me. So this is one of another superstition. Thank you. Thank you, so interesting. I love it, I love it. All right, we got next we got Greg and then followed by Carmela and then Don. So I'm writing them down now. Greg, Greg Carmela, and Don. Got it. Go okay, ahead, Greg. So like, I, like I said, ladies first, and then I'll go after Carmela. All right, Carmela, bring it from Israel. Any superstitions? Oh, Maybe. Did you get booted? Oh, there, there she is. is. Go ahead, Carmela. Okay. If you look at something, you take a cup and you open it in, on the table, then you'll find what you lost. <laughs> what? Say it again. Say that again. I couldn't hear it. One more time. If you lost something, if, for example, you have a key and you don't know where is the key, 
Uh-huh. You take a cup and you open it on your uh, table and then you find it. So all I have to do when I put the keys in the refrigerator is put a cup on the table and I'm going to find the keys? Yes, this is the exposition, you know. <laughs> I wish it was that easy. I would love if that really works. I could use that. Trick. I'm on that one. I, I'm writing that one down. That's good. That's good. Any others that you can think of, Carmel? <laughs> Any more, Carmela? My grandmother taught me. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I I've got one, I guess. Uh, this also comes from my grandmother, Grandma Mary. Uh, she said when someone moves into their either their first house or their new house or new apartment or new condominium, you always must bring them a loaf of rye bread. I don't know where that came from. Rye bread and sugar. Rye bread and sugar. Well, you know, <laughs> I've made that a tradition now because I'm superstitious. If I don't, maybe the, the kids won't have good luck. So each time one of my uh, six kids has moved into their uh, new dwelling, I've come up with a, a loaf of rye bread and, uh, <laughs> and uh, sugar. So uh, I guess they're all in the clear because they've all had pretty good luck. So it does happen. Uh, go ahead, Carmel. You want to finish up? Sorry. We we have to put a garlic in the front of the house <laughs> when we when we move to a new house. Wait a minute! You put garlic in the front of the house? Yes, also superstition. And what does that do? What what does the garlic do? The smell. The smell. It's the the bad people outside. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, smell would do you in right there, and garlic. Right there. All right, Carmela, I'm going to uh, move this thinkingness away, and we'll go now to Greg. Okay, so uh, that oh, nice uh, backdrop you have, Carmela. <laughs> so, hey, uh, a couple of familiar folks. <laughs> yeah, Francis Day. And uh, well, uh, so I'm going to bring a tradition in that I learned from my wife from, from Japan. And uh, uh, one day we were walking down the street in her city, and actually a hearse comes by with a body in it. And she's grabbed my hand and said, please put your thumb inside of your hand like this. So you hide your thumbs. And I said, why? Well, wh what's going on with that? And she said... You're hiding your mom and your dad from dying. So do that now, please. <laughs> I did, you know, of course, but whatever. But that's what they do if they see her. If you're, you see a hearse coming by and you're, you're supposed to hide your thumbs. That's your parents. Interesting. From having you, from dying. It, well, but it, well, my parents are gone, so I guess I can uh, remove the thumb now. But uh, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> that, that's oh, mine. Thank you, Greg. Uh, uh, we're over to Don and then Mel. Don, go ahead, please. And then Gustavo. I can remember hearing that if you spill salt, you need to pick some of the salt up and throw over your left shoulder. And that's where the devil sets, I guess, is on your left shoulder, and that gets rid of the devil. And then there's um, a, a rabbit foot. A rat, I don't know if any of you had rabbit a rabbit foot. I, I remember having a rabbit foot as a kid. It was on a little chain, but that was always for good luck. And then if a ladybug lands on you, you're going to have good luck. So, Do roaches count? <laughs> I don't know about roaches. I think ladybugs are a little prettier, so... Yeah, I don't, think, I, don't think, I don't think I don't think roaches count. You know, in New York we used to have a huge problem. Well, you know, still have a problem, but I don't. But uh, with roaches, and I, believe me, it doesn't bring you good luck if you got like a house full of roaches. Ugh, it's the worst thing you can think of. <laughs> Sorry, I brought it up because one just went running across in front of me here in the in the studio. 
I had no idea this was going to be as good a topic as it is tonight. We're having some fun. I knew We're it. We're learning some. Oh, yeah, of course you I did. I knew it because I said it's going to be a fun night. Remember, I said it's going to be fun. Uh, I don't remember that far back. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Oh, goodness. Uh, let's go to Don, Mel, and Gustavo. Uh, Don, go ahead. Or DL. Hello. I'm. I was all finished. Oh, you were finished. Okay. Yes. All right. I'm sure you're going to think of another one. Oh, uh, I'm sure I will. <laughs> all right. Let's go now to Mel Mel. Go ahead, Mel Mel. Yes, I'm Rob. I just wanted to tell Camilla the garlic. Um, I'm sure I saw it here too in Canada. Um, if you hang a bunch of garlic. It's to drive away, it's to ward off evil, as they said, in your window. Because you walk around and you see people with garlic, a bunch of garlic hanging in the window. It is to ward off, you know, bad things, evil. <laughs> um, the other one is if you're going for an interview, um, you throw a little bit of salt. I think you, spring, you throw the dash of salt before you and some alcohol, you know, spirit white alcohol in front of just to for good luck for success at the interview that's another superstition and um, the other one is I, I i bet you guys did that <laughs> so the dogs two dogs are mating and then you call the other person and you said let's hold it's like you're making a hook you're keeping your hand you know in the form of a hook and it prevents the dog from doing what they're doing. <laughs> I don't know if you guys seen, but it, it works. That one works for sure. <laughs> I've heard that before in Ghana too. <laughs> Put the other one hand and then you say, let's keep it as long as we can. And yeah, it prevents them. So that superstition does work. <laughs> so, All right. So superstitions can actually be very helpful if you think if we think about it, because if we're careful on what we do and don't do those things that are going to create negativity or anything negative, we're in the clear. So there, we're lear I'm learning that tonight, because I had uh, I had a tradition when I uh, was in college that I would always carry my backpack on my left shoulder. Why I did that, I have no idea. But the one time, and I remember, the, God, this is uh, 1970, 50, oh, yeah, yeah, 54 years ago when I was a senior in college. Uh, for whatever reason, I threw my backpack on my left shoulder. And when I threw it on my shoulder, it went up and over the railing and three floors down. So there must be something to that. There must be something to that tradition. What it is, I don't know, but uh, that actually happened. God, I can't believe I remember that 54 years ago, but it did happen. And uh, fortunately, I didn't have anything in the bag other than uh, some some books and papers. So uh, let's now go to Pat Green, please. Pat, bring it. When they talk about uh, black cats walking in front of you and you'll have bad luck, um, I heard from somewhere that uh, that came from witchcraft, that uh, they believed that black cats were their familiar spirits. So uh, that was their partners or whatever. So um, I think that's where that uh, that saying came from, that if a black cat crosses your path, you're going to have bad luck. That's what I heard. Uh, yeah, I can believe that. You know, uh, I did a little research on on that kind of thing, superstitions and ones that, to me, they were a little bit strange. Mm -hmm. And in doing the research, I find that a lot of it comes from witchcraft, a lot of superstitions, religion, witchcraft, uh, traditions. So, you know, there's that's the big three, I guess, where tradition, you know, where uh, where they come from. So. Witchcraft, oh boy. Yellow underwear and witchcraft in one night. I don't know. Okay. I was Let's... wondering too, 
Carmela, did you have a, a antidote when you find a towel in your refrigerator where you can go to find your towels? You know, you said if you replace and misplace your keys, take a cup and turn it over. What do you do if you place a towel in the refrigerator and can't find one? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good ugly too. So here, here we go. We got yellow okay, underwear. So we got owl. Nice strange, you know? uh, if we are a logical persons, we understand that it's stupid. <laughs> and we don't do that. I hate to, I hate to break it to you there, Schwartzy, but there's not a lot of logic out here. <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> And she said, if you believe you're stupid, I have to laugh when she said. <laughs> I'll have to, uh, I'll mention that to my witch the next time I see her. <laughs> uh. Let's, oh, goodness gracious. Uh. Let's, uh, let's go to Rita and then Patience and then uh, Pedro for now. And don't forget to type in. Okay, I have let's another go. one. Oh. If it happens that one of you go to Africa, to Sudan, South Sudan, and you find that there is a palm tree, like, you know, the leaves that was tied at the door, that means um, a, any woman who gave a birth, because there is a woman there, like, she gave a birth and the baby is still small. So if you are coming for visit and you have a child that died before, when it's a baby, so you are not supposed to go in there. It's a bad luck. So that is a sign that that means don't come in because it's a bad luck. That is one. Number two, the other superstition is uh, during Easter time, the day before Easter on Saturday, they say that you know what what you guys are celebrating here in 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 North America as a Halloween Halloween day for us is during Easter time that this um this ghost and so they are coming to the house and if they don't find like they have to take um uh uh what do you call it uh charcoal us and then they will take it and put it around the house and they put a cross at the door that means if they come they see the cross they will be like it will burn them and they will they will not come to your house that is number two uh the third one is um oh i have the third one but okay i forgot the third one but it was funny <laughs> thank you all right well don't go away i'm sure we'll hear from me again as we go thank you thank you okay patience we heard from uh uh i guess we have pedro france gustavo yes oh actually we had no yeah, yeah, if we could do it in that order, that'd be good. Pedro, uh, go ahead, and then Franz and Gustavo, please. Yeah, I heard uh, I heard a lot of uh, the things, and they are funny. Uh, I, in the past, I, I used to be influenced by that. Uh, of course, doing research uh, on the scriptures, when I became a Bible reader, I got rid of all of them. I used to hear the black cat, and I, to an extent, I believed it before that, that going under the ladder. I did believe that, but until somebody, I did some construction work and says, yeah, that's bad luck because if there is paint up on the ladder and you're going down, it might fall on your head. <laughs> so it was, to me, learning from the scriptures, and I invite you to look it up. Uh, and and Rob said uh, that is uh, he comes from uh, uh, from witchery, all these superstitions, and that's exactly right. Uh, so Isaiah sixty five eleven that put it to rest. I never believe in anything. Nobody. It doesn't matter where it comes from, whether it's Africa or England was big in witchery for a time. Uh, wherever it comes from, it does not bother me. By the spirits or going to places where it's dark or all this, it used to, you know, I used to be petrified going to certain places, not anymore. So it's a way, a good way to break it because you are free. Right. You, don't, you know where it's coming from. I'm not gonna even 
be inviting them to come around me because bad spirits are around, all around us. Based on, based on the Bible, Revelation 12, 12. They are all around us. So we have to kind of ignore them and, uh, and don't, don't uh, do the things that they like. They like to fool you. They like to live in the lie. They exist. But as long as you're not messing with them, they will not mess with you. They cannot mess with you. So that's my input. But uh, I used to believe in, in superstitions. <laughs> I enjoy all, all the ones that they're being told for sure. <laughs> yeah, this has been fun so far. I think it's going to get even more fun. I won't say the word funner, but my my granddaughter says funner. Uh, <laughs> unbelievable. Let me take a quick Let peek into the chat. I have a feeling some people might have shared their um opinions jillian says black cats and all cats and kittens are cute i guess in reference to the black cat crossing her path being bad luck um frank rose says how about not passing on a chain letter i've been watching the andy griffith show lol that's right when you get a chain letter there's that pressure that you need to pass it on or you're gonna if you break the chain letter by not passing it on, you'll have bad luck. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure you guys have heard of that, right? If you've had heard of it, nod. I want to see if you've also heard that. That you don't stop the chain letter. You must keep it going. Yeah? yeah. All right. Let's see. Let me keep the chat. Let me keep checking. All right. Check a little more while you're checking the chat. Uh -huh. Let's let's go to uh, France, please. France. Hello, everyone. Uh, I remember as a kid. One superstition that uh, we believed in was that whenever you have a guest come to your house, and you know, most of the guests come to see my parents, and sometimes they sit down and talk for hours, you know. And uh, people used to say, if you want them to leave, especially if it's like dinner time or if it's bedtime for us, and then they sit there for a while and uh, keep talking. And we used to put uh, like salt on the, underneath the guest chair. So they say that if you put salt underneath their chair, so they will leave. So <laughs> we used to do that. And sometimes five minutes later, or 10 minutes later, the person left. That is, uh, that's a good one. That's now. a funny one, actually. Angela Lalanne in the chat, she says, crows are supposed to be bad luck. Also, if you eat something green during New Year's, prosperity will come to you. I never heard of that one. That's interesting. That is, that is oh man. And, and Isabel Bailey says, Don, your superstitions are so much like the Portuguese superstitions. That's interesting. Armin Hulk says, Bailey's two or three, two or three placed in every corner of each room and in all cupboards in the kitchen. Under the same cupboard will keep cockroaches away as they hate the smell. It's a Jamaican family secret passed on to me. And um, Isabel says, black cat is good luck in various cultures. That's interesting. And Juliana Mbambo says, men wearing a hat indoors brings bad luck. That's a superstition. Okay, I took the hat off. And Frank Rose says, you create your own bad luck. There is nothing that you can do that can cause you to have bad luck. It's all in your mind because you believe it. All right. Well, I got one. I don't know if this is superstition or tradition, but my father, God rest his soul, if we'd have a, a group of people over, they'd be playing bridge or canasta, something like that, any card game or mahjong with my mom. If my dad was tired of these people being there, he'd come out in his underwear. He'd come right out into the living room. He'd come out. It didn't matter. He, he had no shirt on. He was in very good physical shape. But he'd come uh, out and he'd have his boxer shorts on. I remember they're white. They were, <laughs> this is crazy, white jockeys. He'd come out with these white jockeys. His, <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I, people left. <laughs> it didn't take long. I don't one or twice once or twice and my dad comes out there parading his uh his uh, he didn't parade his privates but close enough that and was that, it 
Yellow, yellow <laughs> underwear, right? <laughs> <laughs> yellow underwear. Yeah. He didn't need to bring, have yellow. Well, the white did the trick. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, let's. Uh, I think we're going back to Gustavo and then over to Mel. And let me check the list. Let's go, Gustavo. You're on, buddy. <laughs> really, I I just laugh all the superstitions that I heard. It's really funny. Um, and uh, but my thing is this: this uh, if we see more little more deeply. Is this how with these superstitions created by the humanity, they'll make it manage minds now? And we believe it. Look, for example, the poor, poor black cats. She's so cute, cats. <laughs> and they have the, <laughs> the bad, I don't know how to say the bad value of the poor cats, the poor black cats. They have a, they have a they bad have name. Yeah, bad name. Mm -hmm. Excuse me? Uh, they, have, they have a bad name. They get a bad rap. Yeah, bad they, are, they are so lovely and so cute, and no. this is first they born black. <laughs> and I, I wonder if when there there are more black cats in shelters, you know, animal shelters, that uh -huh. that other colors. I'm wondering if it's harder to get them adopted. Yeah, and that is the point here. Now, is this as Pedro explained it also? Is that Look at in the in the point the more deeply point in our minds is, is that the, the humanity how create mm -hmm. uh, these negative things that is is only just the people believe it and follow and sometimes we don't do or don't do, don't do any any step because of that whatever so in my point of view is this this is only just for me wash minds uh, how created and look the culture no. That is in one place we see that this is a good luck to the black cats. So it's just only just management, management uh, minds in uh, in humanity. So in my yeah, point of view, it's exactly in uh, Israel. Well, not Israel. Let's call it the in Vatican City, where most of us used to be from, according to on passive. I doubt if there's a lot of yellow underwear roaming around there. <laughs> 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 right, finish up, Gustavo, and then we'll move on. We've got about four more ahead uh, coming yeah, next. Yeah, so go ahead. Go ahead. Now, just to say that we have to, it's only just to put our eyes and on our soul and spirit to the Lord, and and then we don't have to be afraid of nothing. Always, we will got to be blessed. All right. Good thought there for sure. Let's go back to Mel, Patience, Dawn, and Carmela. Mel? Thank, thank you, Rob. I still love my black cat. I almost did not get it because of all of the, the ill feelings about black cats, but this is such a humble cat, you know, sweet cat. So I'll go with black anytime. <laughs> um, the, last, well, the last one I'm going to talk about is the birds. Somebody mentioned birds earlier, like the hawk, but it's not the hawk. It's they said if a bird comes to your window with the the beak or the the front, their beak, right, facing beak. inwards, expect a stranger. And that superstition it, it happens. If the bird turns its back towards the window, it's bad luck. I'm not sure what the bad luck is, but that's what the, that superstition is. The head is facing in, you expect a stranger. The back facing towards the window is something different, opposite. I'm not sure what the opposite part is. So that was the last um, superstition. All right, thanks, Mel. Let's You're go welcome. to Patience next, please, Patience. <laughs> so my next one is uh, when somebody is whistling at night because of the noise, yes. <laughs> You're not supposed to whistle at night because Ooh. they think it, it attracts evil spirits wow. and the ghosts. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So if they catch you whistling at night, you will have a sleepless night because you'll be thinking the ghost will be attacking you. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Patient. <laughs> and uh, here's one that, uh, here's a little superstition I may have. Tonight, because I have no half and half, I'm drinking uh, black coffee, black coffee. Well, 
I had to spice it up a little with some uh, stevia because I had no cream. I'm just wondering if I've now created uh, a superstition that uh, every night I had, uh, now I got my hat off and now I'm drinking black coffee. I, I don't know. I think I'm going backwards here superstition wise. So I'm going to have to uh, uh, find a way around that. <laughs> So, Ooh, Rob, you're gonna have black hair in the morning. <laughs> what am I gonna have in the morning? Lots of black hair on your head. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I wish I had black hair anywhere on my body. It's all gray. Being so old. But, uh, <laughs> oh my goodness, where are we going next? We're going to Dawn. Let's go to Dawn. Straighten us out on these uh, superstitions, Dawn. Or DL. Now, when you were talking about hats, um, I grew up in an era where, I mean, it was the late 40s, early 50s, and my dad always wore a hat. I mean, he was very much a gentleman, but when he would go in the house, it would always hang on the rack. There was always racks where you would put your hats. And even in church, I can remember him coming into church, there would be hooks there for them, the men to hang their, their hats and I don't think it has anything to do with being superstitious. I think it's more with being polite because it's easier to talk to somebody without a hat on than with a hat on. I mean, if you think about it, because it, it kind of hides their face a little bit. And uh, But it was always a very traditional thing that I grew up with is when the men come in the house, they would hang their hat up in the, the hat rack. And my boys a couple of times tried to sit at my table with their ball caps on and I said, no way you take those hats off at the table. I want to see your face when I talk to you. So that was always a rule in the house. I'm in deep trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, for whatever reason, and I've done this in uh, fairly nice restaurants, I'll keep my hat on and it probably should take the ball cap off. It's one thing if you're, uh, let's say, at a religious uh, thing, if, for example, uh, Pesach is Chabad house. Everybody has obviously their yarmulkes on, which is called a, it's a skull cap. It looks kind of like a beanie, uh, but uh, that's the only hats that are a lot allowed. And uh, so I bet I better pay a closer attention to superstition. I could be going uh, south on all this stuff. So. Well, but I don't I'm, think they really say too much about hats anymore. Not like they used to. I mean, things the world has changed. I mean, it's, it's really changed, uh, but uh, but I, I I just thought that was quite interesting growing up with it like that. And my well, dad I always wear yellow underwear. I guarantee you the world's changing. <laughs> guarantee. You. And, and anyways, I'll let you go on to someone else. <laughs> All right, ah, I keep getting in trouble. Carmela, bring it. Hey. I don't know if it's superstition or not, but people believe that if you wear this, you see that? It's a hand. Yes. Do you see it? Oh, uh, no. No. Not yet. Wait. You see it, hands? It's a, oh, a hand. Yeah, H-A-N-D. Yeah, I see it. Jewelry. Yeah. So many people use these hands in front of their house. It oh. keep you uh, uh, from, from evil, from uh, bad eye. And they wear it as a as a jewelry also. And what does that you mean? find it a lot in the it keep you from uh, evil away. It keeps it keep or oh, keeps evil away. Yes, yeah, keep evil away from you. I see. Interesting. All right. Well, uh, the guy's been quiet and, and so they, far. Huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. So uh, you, you they put this and they put the uh, blue eyes. You have it in, in Turkish. They put a blue eye. It's on in front of the house too. Blue eyes. It's nice to put it, but, but it's a. Uh, it's also a tradition that it's a uh, keep you away, evil away from you. Keep evil away. Okay. Well. 
Yes. All right. All right. Uh, let's uh, let's go to. Uh, I know he may not be ready to speak, but let's go to Sifu Francis. Francis, you got any superstitions? Good morning. Good morning. I I just want to check the ask the chat GPT. Do you know any Chinese chat GPT? Because my friend said that eating noodles have a long life. You know? The noodles, right? If you have a if you eat long noodles, you're supposed to live long. I, I've read that. Oh, good, good. Anyway, the world has changed, but the devil is still the same. Huh? They will come and <laughs> give you some fear, some you know. Uh, then I, I will uh, be I in trouble a, because I've never eaten noodle before. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the best thing is follow what, what our brother uh, Pedro has said. Believe the Bible. Believe the Lord. Uh, the blood of Jesus will cleanse you from the evil one. Anyway, I, I have a long list. Uh, if you talk about Chinese culture or Chinese superstitions, uh, um, the one that I just recent, recently learned is that if someone passed away, or let's let's say my loved one passed away, I should not visit somebody's home uh, within the hundred years, uh, hundred days. Uh, in the hundred days, you should not visit your friends or or even your relative or even wedding. Uh, I, I when my late wife passed away, my cousin get married, and I was not invited. Then uh, I was asking why I was not invited. Is it like, because you are within the hundred days? You haven't finished yet, you know. So it's it's just superstitious. Huh? Uh, the most common uh, superstitious in Asia, or especially the Chinese, uh, and also people in Hong Kong, is uh, the the words number four, number four, fourteen, twenty four, uh, forty four. You know because the pronunciation. When you say in Chinese, it's deaf. Number four is deaf. When you pronounce it, you know, it's deaf. Huh? Like, like when you have a sign sign language, you know, this, uh, refer to four is deaf. So even the army, the military, they would never put the battalion, uh, the fourth battalion, before they put it D, eh? Delta, D battalion. So you have battalion one, battalion two, three, then the number four, they change to D uh, Delta battalion, and they, they go to number five, number six. You know, so even the military also believe in this superstitious of number. But the the other number that is a is is a happy happy number is number eight for the Chinese, huh? because when they pronounce, it's good luck. Okay? Number eight. So number eight, number eighteen, number twenty eight, number forty eight. All the words is pronounced as a uh, you know, good luck. You know, eighteen is sure luck. Uh, Twenty-eight is easy luck. You know, right? Then uh, you have uh, forty-eight super luck. You know, in the way you pronounce. You know? So these people bring down from the from the ancient of days. You know, bring down this pronunciation. The way you call it. So they they, they take on to the new generation. Right? So of course we we have uh, to adjust our culture. You know, uh, for example. Uh, Chinese New Year, on the eve of Chinese New Year, I think may, some of you may have, on the eve of Chinese New Year, we sweep everything, uh, sweep. and then on the midnight, we keep the broom, right? because the broom have a have a birthday on Chinese New Year, never touch a broom, right? because the broom will sweep away the luck, right? if you touch the broom, you sweep away the luck. So what happened, you have today, you have a new generation of, uh, of technology, yeah? and they ask the parents, how about the vacuum cleaner? Can we use a vacuum cleaner to clean the house? You know, and then the the old and then the old folks say, "Oh, vacuum cleaner is allowed." Why is it allowed? Because the vacuum suck in the light, <laughs> suck in, <laughs> bring back the light. <laughs> so all this, all this, uh, you know, tradition can can also have a new version uh, or updated version. You know, so it's crazy. And the last one I have is uh, okay. uh the ghost month. Huh? The go we have a ghost month in in Chinese culture. You know, once a year we have a ghost month, which go the whole month of uh, uh I mean they they do understand the moon when the moon appear, 
So they had the ghost month where they, they bring and they celebrate all these uh, food festivities uh, that offer to idols, offer to the so called to that God. The meaning is the ghost month, the ghost will appear, will arise in the city. So if they are hungry to look for food, you need to feed them, otherwise, they come to you and disturb you. So that's how, how the ghost month is, is termed in certain Asian country, right? The first day of the month and the 15th day of the month is also a superstitious month where they offer money in paper money to the to the loved one in heaven or in the in the resting place you know they offer those uh, uh they offer a house huh? in uh, in terms of the cardboard house they offer a mercedes bank or rose royce uh, they, they think that they can offer them a uh, good life huh? the car the money to to the resting place so that the loved one can use it yeah. So, thank you. Thank you, Sifu. Ah. Sifu, nice. let me come to the place where they offer things so that I can get one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. What you need is on passive. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, thank you, uh, Sifu. All right, next we'll go to, man, this is 58 different people, or well, the same people, but 58 of you have now spoken on this. I'm keeping track. Go ahead, Pedro. 58. You Pedro, me. can you unmute? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I, okay. I, I didn't hear you. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to say uh, uh, thank you, uh, Francis, for confirming. I have, I had uh, uh, a couple from China that were my friends, and uh, I had uh, asked him about uh, the number four because I had heard it before. If you make any any businesses with Chinese people, and let's say the price of a house or, or whatever. Is uh, like four hundred or four hundred thousand. Uh, it includes fours. They don't want to do anything or business if it includes the four because of the superstition. Uh, so that kind of you you corroborate that. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I, I appreciate that. Uh, you learn much when you when you really hear other people saying things that uh, you have heard. But when it's confirmed, then you know. But I didn't know about the eight. So that is a new thing to me because I don't believe in good luck, like I said, but that eight to me uh, means, uh, it's, it's means a lot, 18. I have a system of, of adding numbers. So uh, that was very revealing when you mentioned eight and 18 and 28 and that, that was a new thing to me. But thank you so much for confirming the number four. Uh, because now I know for sure. I know the sound of the two words for four and death is the same, very close. And that is the reason why they 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 think it's a bad luck because death, the sound of saying death in Chinese is almost the same as saying number four in Chinese. So that's why the superstition come from. They, they don't want that because it sounds like dead. <laughs> so thank you for clarifying. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Let's now go to Pat. Rob, Pat Green. Rob I have a question. A question. For, go ahead. Yeah, for Francis. Francis, so for example, now they don't want number four. So if a child is born like with the age, are they not celebrating if they are four years, 14 like they have to pass that that number or how they how do they do with the when you're growing up because like that four is gonna be there on or if you are born on the fourth so how are they dealing with that i, I think that there is always a, a good and bad uh, part of a tradition or superstition you know like if, if your child is born on the day or the fourth day the parents will treat the child bad, badly uh, they, or they will offer the child away at birth. That's what happened in China, you know. But they also believe in the first child should be a boy. If the first child is a girl, either they throw it away, throw it away, 
or they kill it or they donate it to somebody else. Now, it's, it's either there's always a good and bad side, you know. So tradition or superstition sometimes uh, it's not a good thing, you know, right? So you you have uh, uh, even like uh, in in Hong Kong number nine is a is a very uh, auspicious number number nine. Uh, even, that's why you have this uh, city called Kowloon. You know, is a uh, nine dragon. Eh? Loon is a dragon. So now dragon is also a very uh, uh, what is it's like a god in in Hong Kong. No, you cannot score something about uh, dragon. Uh, the two thing important in in Hong Kong superstition is water and dragon. Uh, water is money. Yeah? Water in in a uh, in the culture is money. Yeah? Uh, when when we talk about water, we talk about money. In on Pesci, we talk about apple, you know, and the Chinese say what apple are you talking about. We talk about ap uh, water. Water is money, you know? right? So, so in Hong Kong, because uh, of the casino is so popular there, you know, so water uh, is a very dedicated words to use. You know, uh, do you have water? For example, in the restaurant, the the the, the sales uh, the waiter cannot anyhow anyhow reply. Say we don't have water, you know. He will get a slap with a customer, you know, what you're talking about. You know, it's a bad luck talking to the customer like this. You know, so number nine and water is a very uh, important words in Hong Kong. In Singapore, probably not so strong. Right, thank you. Thank you for that. And now we'll swing on over to uh but first before we swing uh, over to uh, Pat, you'll be next. And Pat, Carmela, and Mel is uh, just got, uh, Lynn showed me a text message from Vavine Benny, our friend from Papua New Guinea, who lives in Australia with her husband. Uh, she just said that uh, as young people uh, wear ball caps in the house, uh, it's going to cause baldness at a young age. Well, I was bald at at 26, so I guess that's very true. She said, if this is for men only, they say if you wear caps inside the house or in the shade frequently, you will be bald at a very young age. And right, that is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's go back to you, Pat. In my town. Um, on the way home, we we usually drive over, you know, over by some railroad tracks, and um, we invariably see a black cat. And I'm always telling my husband, I think they're pretty, you know. Um, I I think they have their own uniqueness, and I just think that they're pretty, you know. I don't worry about, you know, if a black cat passes your, you know, crosses your path, all that stuff. I just think they're pretty and unusual animals. So I, you know, I like watching them. So anyway, I just thought I'd clear that up. <laughs> well, it's crystal clear now. <laughs> uh, let's go uh, Carmela and then Mel, please. In the Jewish tradition, number uh, 18 is uh, it's, it's, uh, in uh, the letters of the Jewish is uh, Chai. Chai means alive. So uh, when we are going to a wedding and we have to bring money, we give the high uh, shekels or high uh, dollars, or it means 18. You give, you give 18 or uh, 118 or 1,800. This means bring a uh, lucky high, high in a life. Hi. So uh, this is the, the tradition of the Jewish. I'm from, I'm well familiar with that one, number 18. All right, thank you for that, Carmelo. Let's go to Mel Mel. Superstition, number 13. Why is there no number 13 floor at the 13th floor? Of 13 anything like why is it an unlucky number that's a big superstition everywhere really <laughs> number 13 
So I don't know of an apartment building if the 13th floor, does anybody? Um, Number 13, one three. Yeah. Some, some building have- In Israel, the, the certain is a lucky one. Oh, mm -hmm. I noticed some buildings have uh, the 13th floor and some don't, so I don't know. <laughs> I think it depends on the the owners if they <laughs> believe in that subscription and super. Yeah, it, it depends on the developer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if they yeah. in Singapore, in Singapore, and, and look at look at uh, what's being posted there now. Friday the thirteenth. That's an unlucky day. Yeah. And and, it, and you know uh, myself, uh, the number thirteenth is always considered uh, as bad luck. And I remember back in the day when I was nineteen years old and they had the first draft for the Vietnam War era, and uh, uh, myself and a lot of freshmen in, in college, we all gathered in the TV room because they were going to actually have a lottery on uh, television and pick the numbers for the draft. And if you were 19, uh, you were worried about that because you're going to find out what number you were going to get as where you would fall into the possibility of you being drafted. And I remember that my number, when it got picked out, when they announced the numbers, my number was number 13. And that was not good because that, that's a pretty low number. And, and that, that meant that you might have a good possibility of uh, definitely being drafted. And, you know, anyway, so 13th is, a, is an unlucky number. <laughs> All right. Let me, let me comfort you with 13. In the Chinese, 13 is uh, like what, what the uh, sister Kamala said, is life. 13 is life. 14 is, 14 is bad luck. So number 13, when you say to the Chinese, uh, is sure live. Sure life, huh? Surely. Shortly lived. All right. Well, thank you, everybody there. Uh, let me take a, a little uh, scroll down uh, memory lane here and see if there's any other hands. I see Mel. Go ahead, Mel. No, I'm sorry, Rob. It's supposed to be down. Let me put it down. I put it down. We're good. Thank I you. didn't want to miss you. I've been known to miss you, so I didn't want to miss you. I'm going to say something about Friday the 13th. That is my lucky day, even though it's a it's a bad day. Anytime Friday the 13th comes, I try to go to the bank. And whatever I ask or request from the bank, I get it. So Friday the 13th, I make sure I go to the bank to get whatever I want. <laughs> All right. Well, Friday the 13th is lucky for some. That's good. That's good. Thank you, uh, Rita. That's patience. Oh, that was patience. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm not looking at the screen. I'm trying to go by voices. The voice. We've now had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty-six, fifty-nine, sixty-one different uh, comments from you guys here, plus what's in the, the chat. The chat is blowing up both on YouTube and here. <clears throat> right now we have, let's see, oh goodness, there's uh, 38 watching now, there was 58, but we're at 38 watching on YouTube, and 58 here, that makes 96, not too shabby everybody, yeah. 96 tonight for Superstition Sunday, is today Sunday? Today is Sunday. Sunday. Uh -huh. Superstition Sunday. All right. Very nice. And the chat is wonderfully active tonight. I appreciate you guys. Um, the YouTube chat also is very active. It's just wonderful. So Angie Lynn says, my birthday is on the 13th. So it's lucky. <laughs> Good one. True. All right, let's go to Greg Hill. Greg, you're next up on The Price is Right. And also, Sarita is asking in the chat, my question is why number 313 is considered unlucky? So anybody know that? Chime in. It's a good question. Okay. Go ahead, Greg. Sure. Thanks. Uh, these are really, really great. <laughs> I mean, it's fun to listen to them. Although I, I, I'm not one of these kind of people that believe in uh, superstitions and stuff. And I don't believe in, in good luck or bad luck. But there's a song out there that... Uh, <laughs> And I'm sure Rob, you probably know this one, but it is actually I should have I shouldn't probably ask to play it because John Barilla might this might be kind of fun for John Barilla to sing, and uh, 
don't know if you know it or not, but you remember this the show, and I know John. He's got you got to know this, John. You remember the show, Hee Ha. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, so on Hee Ha, there was four guys on there that stood stood on stage, and they had the big old whiskey jug, and they sang a song, and it went, "Room, spare, and agony on me." Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If there weren't no bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Roomy spare and agony on me. <laughs> hee haw. <laughs> hee haw. All right. That could be one for John coming up soon. Uh, that was Greg. Let's see where we're going, or we may be going signing. I'm not sure. Any more? That was Greg, Any so more I'll take his hand now. Contribution. Did anybody figure out why the number 13 is unlucky? Anybody Google it yet to give us a background? I'm I thought I, I, I thought somebody would do that. I could do it real quick, maybe. I don't know. Let me try. Okay. Any more hands? To share your superstitions or superstitions you know about. Well, let's see where we're going next. Oh, what happened to your screen? I don't know. I, I didn't click anything. Oh. I'm refreshing now to see if it'll go back to normal. Oh, your screen got dark all of a sudden. It image. won't go normal. See, the light is on. And I don't okay. mind just, just a, can I make a, just a quick comment? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, babe. Well, you know, I have a way of uh, counting numbers. And uh, one example is that uh, Michael Chata, you know, he is a 444. And yeah. I always tell him three times four equal 12. One plus two equal three for free for the and for me. So I, I constantly put that in because I actually have a system, develop a system of counting numbers, and this is to double check fig large figures. If you wanna come up with a summary of what number is, let's say you do the summary twice, and you know if, it, if, the, if the final number is one through nine, it can be one through nine, depending if you add all the numbers, if he does twice, you know that you have you type all the numbers correctly. There is no chance that you made a mistake. So, third, I have a version for 13. 13 is a version of four. You are one and three is four. So just like uh, uh, Francis Tay was saying that in Chinese, eight is a good number. And then he says, 18 is also a good number because it has the eight and so forth, similar to that. But to me, it's an exact math. And, and I'll demonstrate that later when, whenever we have a chance. But for now, 13, it has, uh, to me, it has changed. <laughs> it's another four. It's a different four. It's not the same four, but it's a version of four. Just to say, I, I'm sorry, I didn't want to detract you from what we're doing. <laughs> Thank you. Let, I'm going to the chat, pick up a few comments there. And I see that um, Auntie Lynn, she says, I'm old enough to remember hee haw. Or so am I, Auntie. Yeah. <laughs> and, and John, too, right? Yeah, John, oh, that's John, a, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, yeah, go ahead John. Yeah, I was going to say I found it. Uh, if if we're interested in it, uh, the lucky number—I mean, the unlucky number thirteen—it's considered unlucky because of two famous dinner guests associated with it. First of all, the thirteenth guest to arrive at the Last Supper, Judas Iscariot. Judas, he betrayed Jesus. And le that led to his crucifixion. And then again, the 13th guest to arrive at a dinner party in Valhalla, Loki, that's the character, I guess, Loki, tricked another attendee into killing the god Baldor, causing the world to plunge into darkness. So that's the two reasons I got when I searched for it. Thank you. And I, I'll, I now see that Don Swihart said in the chat, Judas, the apostle who betrayed Jesus, 
was the 13th guest at the Last Supper. So she had that information as well. Thanks. Thanks for that, uh, Don. Um, I don't know what's up with my screen. You're, you're back to okay? Is, oh, you're okay now? No. Uh, hmm. I would, I say your widgets are too big. You can maybe uh, go to view at the very top. You know where there's view? Oh, okay. And, and then um, zoom, make zoom, make it smaller. Zoom out, I think it's called. Zoom out. No. Oh, zoom in then. It's the other one. Same thing. I did both. One makes it smaller, one makes it bigger. So that made it smaller, right? Do zoom in again and again and again until you see. Oh. So if he wants to see what everybody, see everybody, he can't see everybody. Is it getting better? Mm -hmm. Or is it going the other way? I don't know. Just look and see. It's if going the other way. way. So, so to go the other way. Whatever way that to make it smaller. I'm going to log out. Okay, he's going to log out. All right, in the meantime, is there any more hands raised? Anybody else want to say something? We're good? I don't see any hands raised. I think what we're going to do now is we're going to go to Deb. Deb, she is ready to teach us. And what's cool is that she selected words related to our topic tonight so pretty cool so she's going to be teaching us uh full moon salt over shoulder she's going to teach us devil and myth so teach us old wives tale and walk under ladder lucky pennies lucky horseshoes friday the 13th knock on wood broken mirror good bad and ugly so we'll put it on the side view side view and deb is ready to roll look for her oh she'll be in the middle i mean in the center so it's fine Keep muted, everybody. Keep muted, okay? So, so her image stays on the screen. Thank you. Go ahead, Deb. Okay. Hello. I just kind of jump in late and watch what you say. That. Okay. You're all talking about superstition. It's part of your imagination. It's not on the list. But I thought I'd show you superstition. So cool. Okay. We got full moon, full moon. We were talking about salt, just rolls on the left side, left shoulder, go over the shoulder, salt. So, devil, devil, you can eat one or two hands, devil, devil, devil. Myth, I'm not sure, it's part of the story, but I spell it M Y T H. Old Wives Tale. Old, well, wait a minute. Old Wives Tale Story. Old Wives Story. Walk under the ladder. Walk under the ladder. I don't do it. I go around. <laughs> uh, lucky pennies. Lucky. Middle finger. Lucky pennies. One cent. Cents. Lucky pennies. Lucky horseshoes. Lucky horseshoes. Lucky horse, horse had small ears, horse shoes. Friday the 13th is my daughter's favorite thing, not me. Friday, 
at Friday in Stockholm. Friday 13. Like three fingers. 13. Knocking on wood. Really have to find wood. Knocking on wood. Knocking on the wood. Knock, knock, knock. The mother do superstition. Uh, broken mirror. I mean, crack mirror. Broken mirror. Seven years of bad luck. They always say the good, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And you said black cat. Black cats. The other one is goats. I like that one. I love goats. That's it. All Mom. right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe pick a sign, Deb, and we will pick a picture. Which sign that's easy to see? Let her pick. Good night, Frank. Frank has to go. And Deb's list of her signs is in the chat, in the webinar chat. It's also in our messenger group for Roblin Live, if you want to look at what she just taught. All right, here we go. Back to Deb. Is she here? Oh, Deb. Hello. Which sign? Moon. Moon. Okay, this is moon moon all right the letter c because it's the shape of the moon right the crescent moon 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 all right we'll be ready for a picture now anybody who wants to be in the picture turn your camera on aseta christian onyeloni sita ram david switzer france martin lynn angie lynn Pedro, anybody want to be in the picture? We'll give you a few seconds to come on camera. Okay, here we go. Let's count on the count of, I will count to one, two, three. I will take the picture. One, two, three, full moon. All right, you're, you're not quite on camera yet. Your um, video is off. I'll take a look at this. I can't put my video on. Oh, okay. All right, I'm saving the picture. Okay, so now we would, I don't see any more hands raised, no hands raised, so we will go on. Thank you, we took the picture already, Rita. Were you in the picture, Rita? Were you in it? Oh, okay, good. Okay. Oh, my husband's in the, his video's on, working fine. That's good, we see you. So, uh, I didn't touch anything. I it was when it. you came back in. It was odd. Like okay. this. Oh, okay. Oh well, we're we're okay, Con. We're gonna go. Let me let bring in um, uh, Clover. Kelly's coming in now, and we're gonna have uh, John sing. Is John on camera? Where are you, John? Uh oh. I don't see John. Anybody see John? He may have had to come back in. Maybe. I'm in. You got. You're looking for me. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. I got. I got knocked out, but I. I uh... Came back in. I was fast. Good job. Yeah. Are, are you calling on me? Is it my turn? <laughs> it is your turn to sing. Well, I, I was hurrying too. I, when I was trying to come back in at all, my goodness, they're probably going to be calling me any second. And of course, with my bad luck, talk okay. about the number 13, whatever. I said, oh my goodness. So anyway, <clears throat> if you don't mind though, we didn't have to talk about superstitions. I feel like uh, we, didn't, we couldn't have the song, uh, the theme song tonight because they had a technical difficulty or something. If you don't mind, real quickly, I, I, I'm just going to sing it for us, uh, which I haven't done for a while, but I'd like to do that. Okay? That would be awesome. And that's, this, doesn't, this doesn't count as my song. I'm going to do a song. I'm just going to do the theme song for us right now. All right, we got it. <laughs> okay, here we go. 
there is a show there is a show there is a show we all love to go to roblin live roblin live tonight there are two hosts they are the most i gotta say they're not too shabby they ain't crabby it's the roblin live right now updates panels info fun variety talk show it's the one like on passive it's delicious it's on passalicious you can get anything that you want at ash mafara's restaurant Oh, Roblin Live, Roblin Live. It's the show that we all love to go to. Roblin Live, Roblin Live right now. Woo, doggies. <laughs> okay, I changed the ending a little bit, but what the heck. Um, I mean, that's for Rob always going, woo, doggies. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I just thought we had just do it real quickly because I, I thought wait a minute but this is what i think the only night we weren't able to have it and why not go ahead and sing it real quickly so anyway now <clears throat> clear my throat and now we have a song tonight that again i always like it when there's something to say about the song of course so tonight i'm gonna do a song i'm sure well i always say everybody's gonna know and i keep forgetting it my era you know maybe some younger folks might not know uh the song born to be wild uh, it was actually uh well it was recorded by steppenwolf they were like uh one of the first um uh heavy metal kind of rock bands back quite a while ago in the 60s and early 70s and anyway so we're gonna do born to be wild now that interesting thing about <clears throat> born to be wild is it's a song written by Mars Bonfire. How about that for a name? Mars Bonfire wrote Born to be Wild. And it was first performed, of course, like I said, by the band Steppenwolf. And uh, it was often invoked in both popular and counterculture to denote a biker appearance or attitude. You know what I mean by motorcycle biker appearance or attitude. And uh, it is most notably featured and this was kind of interesting is in the movie, in the film, Easy Rider. And I know that movie really well. That's again, I don't know how many folks remember that, but what a great movie that was. The movie Easy Rider, which was, uh, it was about two biker guys, kind of hippie bike, biker guys back in the 60s, 70s. Uh, and it was written, it was directed by Dennis Hopper, who uh, was an actor at first, and he started when he was like a, a young guy, a teenager. He was actually in Rebel Without a Cause and a whole lot of movies, uh, not as a star back when he was younger, but he was in a lot of movies. And he became a film director, and he directed and starred in the movie Easy Rider with uh, 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 Peter Fonda, Henry Fonda's son, who was the star with Dennis Hopper. They were the two guys, the two biker guys in the movie. And now the interesting thing is Born to be Wild was not just in the movie, but it was the opening theme song for the movie Easy Rider. It was the two bikers, Dennis Hopper's character and uh, Peter Fonda's character. They're riding their motorcycles through the, through the, uh, I think it was Highway 101 in California uh, with the mountains on one side. You know, that's a great highway if anybody knows it. If you're ever in California, you can drive it from Northern California all the way down through the state. And they're, they're riding their motorcycles and the whole song of this song goes all through that whole sequence. And then when it, and it shows like the who's in the movie, who directed the movie and all that stuff as, the, as they're driving their bikes. So that's what, what this movie's uh, song is most noted for. It was the theme song of the opening of the movie easy rider <clears throat> so good all right now am i still on okay Car i hope so uh i got okay that's working it looks like my sounds there let me just check my sound because you know how we've been cursed lately let's just see ah good boy i'm glad about that okay so we should be ready so here we go with steppenwolf <clears throat> their song born to be wild <clears throat> Oh, yeah. Yes, 
your motor running. Head out on the highway, looking for adventure. And whatever comes our way, yeah, darling, gonna make it happen. Take the world in a love embrace. Fire all of your guns at once and explode into space. I like smoking lightning. Heavy metal thunder. Racing with the wind. And the feeling that I'm under. Yeah, darling, gonna make it happen. Take the world in a love embrace. Fire all of your guns at once and explode in the space. Like a true nature child. We were born, born to be wild. And we climbed so high. I never wanna die. Yeah. Born to be wild. Born to be wild. All right. Here we go. Rocket. Oh, yeah. Born to be wild. Woo! Get your motor running. Uh, head out on the highway. Looking for adventure. And whatever comes our way. Yeah, darling, gonna make it happen. Take the world in a love embrace. Fire all your guns at once and explode into space. Like a true nature child, we were born, born to be wild. When we climb so high, I never wanna die. Born to be wild. Born to be wild. Ooh, yeah. Born to be wild. Born to be wild. There you go. Born to be wild. All right, all right, all. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. Uh, if there, let's take a peek, make sure there's no other hands. And then I think we're going to say a fond farewell. Good evening. Arrivederci. Let's see. Uh, okay, looks like we're all clear, so to speak. And I'm sitting over here next to Lynn because uh, my computer was doing some strange things. So I'll work on that uh, tonight or tomorrow. It's not a big deal. A picture with the I love you sign. All right, picture with I love you. Here we go. Everybody, this sign, international sign for I love you. Everybody knows this by now. Don, can you do that? Come, I love you. Mel, I love you. All right. Okay, ready? One, two, two. three. Now. All right. All right. Well, again, tonight was a banner night. Well over 100 folks between uh, all the platforms, especially O-Connect. And thank you, Carmela, for putting up that uh, uh, background. Looks like a couple of old fuddy-duddies. And uh, tomorrow night uh, at 8 o'clock, we're going to be doing another one in our series about uh, 
uh, appearing cultural, uh, diver, appreciating cultural, appreciating cultural diversity. Tomorrow night's topic will be saying. So, in other words, in your culture, there's sayings that guide you, right? In your culture, they say, don't do this or do that or, you know, that I think will be very interesting. So be thinking about what your culture says. I mean, what are the, the things, the themes or the values of your culture? All right. On that note, we're going to say uh, a good night to everybody. We'd like to thank everybody in the chat, both uh, the chat here on O-Connect, the chat in uh, YouTube, it was flying. It was over 400 on YouTube chat. So that's good stuff. And a similar number, I think, if not more. Yeah, that was total chat. Yeah, 38 still in our YouTube chat. Very still active. Still 38 there, so very active. And uh, we'll see everybody tomorrow night. Tomorrow daytime is a Monday fun day with a red and uh, and Jane, just check your listings for anything else you might be interested in. There's uh, usually well over 40 different webinars and chats. So rather than mention a bunch of them, we just mentioned the one, uh, you know, on Monday for uh, Red Redfern and Jane Redfern. So, and I'd like to uh, take another picture because I see Chris Tuzan came on and Saidu Seik is here. Saidu. We're glad your, your camera came on. I know you were trying to get your camera on. So let's go yes, ahead. Yes, ma'am. Welcome. Namaste, namaskar, sir. Hello, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Lots of love to you. So let's go ahead and do another Namaste. picture. Namaste. Saito Kapi. Say this. Saito. Yes. Okay. Uh, thumb, yeah. And then we're going to take a picture. One more picture again. Got Chris here. Good, good. And Francis is on now. Awesome. One, two, two three. Now. Hello, ma'am. How are you, ma'am? Hi, Saido. We're happy you're here. You have a lovely smile. You brighten up the room. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. Have six so pictures. Those pictures are going to go into our message in live messenger thank you all right so we said a few thank yous there we're very appreciative everybody came tonight. Morning, great you. topic great topic uh talking superstitions tomorrow night we'll be talking sayings what's uh, oh. sayings in your culture oh <coughs> uh, yeah what are the things you grew up with what you, what you heard as a child and you grew up with, and that should be very interesting. All right, so check your uh, local uh, listings in the back office for anything else you might be interested in, and we will see you manana, or actually today in some areas of the world. And you know the drill. Salute to all veterans, military. Salute to all active duty military. Salute to all first responders, and here it comes again. Salute to every one of you for being here. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, John. No bananas. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. Oh, oh, we should uh, be always forget. Great, Great performance, performance job. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, tomorrow night is actually going to be Geek Night with the Gipster. It's a great deal. That will be the following. Tomorrow night we're going to work with Greg on making the gift, the how to. So sorry about that, Greg. I didn't Fashion know is idea. singing. Fashion is singing for us. Good night. Goodbye. Okay. Okay, until okay, later, I'm going to play a video. Okay, oh, okay. okay, so let's all uh, uh, watch the video before we end. Okay. Go ahead, Chris. Thank yes. you, Chris. Link. Uh, just yes. to test uh, yes. the uh, live stream uh, while we're just hearing. Okay. What, what is singing? singing. Let her sing for us before maybe we close. Yeah. Okay, click the blue button to unmute. Thank you.
I don't know until it's two hours. Yes. 20 minutes. Yeah, so we're still going to be talking anyway. Yeah, agony on me. Woo! Oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, all right, let me get back to what I was uh, starting to correct myself on. We're going to have a uh, kind of a double barreled situation tomorrow night. We'll have a uh, Greg uh, uh, Hill will be teaching how to make a GIF, how to make a GIF. And we'll also uh, have, we'll talk about sayings, uh, cultural, appreciating cultural diversity with sayings. So we'll combine the two and that should give us a nice two hour program, which we'd like to do. So if you guys want to learn how to make GIF, G-I-F, Come to the show because you'll learn how to do it. I'm really excited yeah, yeah. about it. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, Christian was singing. Please, can we hear what she was singing? Because like when we say we are bye bye, she was singing a song. Maybe it will just take a couple of minutes, a second. Who is Christian? Patient. Patient. Oh. Yeah, we don't uh, generally do singing other than a John song. Yeah, okay. To be honest. Yeah, because yeah. others have been asking. And yeah, we just... get asked all the time about, oh, can I sing, can I sing, can I sing? So we've tried to mm -hmm. keep it to just one. Otherwise, it becomes, becomes a singing thing. <laughs> and then uh, we, accept every, we have to accept everybody. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so thank you, thank you, That's Patience. Great. We appreciate your thought there very much. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we will see everybody manana. Thank you for being here and uh, be safe, be well, and be on passive lively. See ya. Bye bye. And, and say bye. Good night. Love you all. Oh, you all have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Great singing. Good night, everybody. Make a um, in two in one. We're out of here.